We have put this short information film together to introduce you to the functions, features and operations of your Nebi heat pump. In this film, as well as talking to residents who have them in their homes and use heat pumps on a daily basis, we'll also cover some common functions and basic system care for the end user. Hello, I'm Mike Proudfoot, I'm the Maintenance Manager for Muir Housing Group. Uh, we're here today at the Hollies in Cheshire to talk about the, the newly installed central heating system. These are two bedroom apartments in this newly completed estate, um, completed about two to three months ago, primarily for shared ownership, which allows first time buyers to get their foot on the property ladder. In this particular apartment, the model that we've fitted is the Nebi F205P. That provides all the heating, hot water and heat recovery necessary for this apartment. We're really excited about having these systems fitted into the apartments. The green credentials are second to none. They are easy to use and we're hoping for a, a saving in fuel for our residents. I moved into this house in Briggsley uh, about six months ago now in, in July of last year. Um, when we first looked at the, um, at the heating system it looks quite um, complex and it's going to be difficult to use but in comparison to the other systems I've used in previous properties it's much easier to use and, and obviously if we're doing a bit for the environment as well then that, then that all helps as well so the experience has been great. As well as being easy to use the, the other benefits of the system are that the, um, we don't seem to get any, any cold spots, there's no drafts. Um, the hot water is always readily available. I mean, we've had times where we've we've had two or three baths within a space of a few hours, and there's always been plenty of hot water there to use as well. So yeah, really good, really good. If you look on the system, it tells you what the temperature is outside to inside, so it gauges it that way. And whereas our old property, you're more or less messing around with it all the time, regulating it, regulating it. Where with this, it all sort of flows its above well, flows itself. What we've also noticed about this system is that the, the temperature is, is very constant throughout the day and night. So we, with, other, with other types of heating systems, you get your peaks and troughs when, you, when you've got your radiators on, on full blast and, and then off. With this one, the radiators are never on full, the underfloor heating never seems to be overly hot. It's just always at a nice, a nice ambient temperature. Um, even last week I got up in the middle of the night and normally in a, in a normal house you'd be expecting it to be freezing cold but it, it was just the same temperature as in the day so I mean I'm no expert on how it, how it actually works but it just seems to, seems, seems to be fantastic. So. We have a family of eight and constantly every day I'm doing a load of washing and basically I put it on the clothes area and let them dry that way and I noticed from doing it in this house to my last house in the last house, my windows were getting steamed up and everything. In this house, because you've got all the air vents, no windows steam up, you don't feel damp. You know, it's lovely. For my job, I, I work in the property industry as a, as a damp specialist. So I'm quite familiar with things like condensation and damp and mould forming. With this system, because it's changing the air much more often and more rapidly, it's removing any moisture that you produce in cooking, cleaning, bathing, that type of thing. It's not allowing the moisture to settle on windows and, and walls. It's been replaced by, by the warm air of, of, the, of the system, so no chance of any, of any unhealthy air. The, the air is always fresh and, and free of any moisture, so that's another benefit, really. I would understand why people were perhaps a little bit sceptical of, of this type of system, with it being very new and, and different technology to what we're used to, but once you've got your head around how it works and you don't have to be changing settings and dials and turning things on and off constantly daily, then it's much, much more easy to use. If I got the chance to recommend this system to anybody, I would, I would tell them to, to sort of snap it up with both hands because we found it much more beneficial to our lifestyle in that, like I said, not only the cost point of view, but the ease of use of the whole system, that we find it absolutely fabulous. So I certainly recommend it to anybody. The way your exhaust air heat pump is designed to work is to extract air from the wet rooms, such as the kitchen and bathroom, through a ducting system back to the heat pump, where the heat pump extracts the energy from this air in order to provide further heating and hot water for the property. Air which the ventilation system extracts from the wet rooms will remove steam from the bathroom and kitchen, therefore relieving the necessity to open windows. Opening windows can reduce the amount of energy that the heat pump can extract from the inside air therefore can potentially lead to a reduction in the efficiency of the system. 
because your heat pump works at a lower temperature than a typical gas boiler, it is normal for your radiators not to feel overly hot. The thermostatic control on your radiator has a range of settings, from being completely off, the white circle, to being fully on, the black circle, with varying temperature settings in between. The normal setting for your everyday living areas, such as the living room, dining room and kitchen, is setting 3. For rooms which you use less and require less heat, such as your bathroom and bedrooms, setting 2 is recommended. Although your heat pump requires very little maintenance, we do advise that once a month you check that all the ventilation ducts are free of dust, and are not blocked in any way. If you do need to clean any of the ventilation units, simply use a duster to clean the surface, or remove the unit covers to wash and clean them more thoroughly before replacing them back into their housings. Depending on your system, you will have one or two vents bringing clean air in from the outside, and three to four internal vents mounted in the ceiling in different rooms. These vents are an essential part of your heating system, and circulate air through the heat pump and around your property. To make sure that the correct ceiling vents stay in the correct rooms, we suggest that you clean each vent separately to avoid mixing them up. It is also essential that the settings of the individual vents are not tampered with or swapped between rooms, as these have been preset and balanced by the installer for them to work to their best efficiency. We'll now look at the controls of the F205 and show you just how easy the unit is to use and look after. Working from left to right of the panel, firstly we have the thermometer gauge, that should normally show a reading of between 50 and 60 degrees. Next is a pressure gauge, which should normally show a reading of between 1 and 2 bars. Next there are three indicator lights. The bottom light relates to the built-in immersion heater, the middle light relates to the filter and defrost mode, and the top light represents the compressor. Under normal operating conditions, whenever these lights are lit, they should be constant rather than flashing. If there are lights that are flashing, this can be a notification that there is a filter to check, or that there could be a problem with the system, in which case, consult your installer or housing association. To the right of the lights is the main control knob. Number one on the control knob is referred to as spring autumn setting, and is to be used through the warmer months of the year. Setting 1 relies on the heat pump only to provide heating and hot water. Number 2 on the control knob is referred to as winter mode, and is to be used during the colder months of the year. This setting gives permission for the heat pump to use its built-in immersion heater, when the pump needs to generate more heat. Number 3 on the control panel is referred to as rescue mode, and is only to be used in an emergency when you have been advised to switch to it by a qualified engineer or NIBI themselves. As you can see in this demonstration, the top light is flashing, which is normal for setting 3, and is simply saying that the heat pump is now in rescue mode, and will rely on providing heating and hot water from the built-in immersion heater only. Should you need to disengage this operation, you will need to turn the unit back to zero, and leave it for around 20 seconds to reset, and then turn it back to number one to resume normal operation. Because the heat pump is designed not to be switched off, it comes with a room thermostat. This allows you to set back the temperature rather than switch it off, for example when no one is home. You can manually set the room temperature of the heat pump by using the up and down buttons on the thermostat to select the desired room temperature. However, do not set the temperature too low, so that it allows the property to become cold, as the heat pump will have to work harder to regain normal temperature when you raise the temperature later, and this may result in an increase in your energy consumption. A good value to select is 18 degrees. The temperature can also be set automatically using the built-in schedule feature, which allows you to set specific times to set back the heat pump temperature. To alter a time zone, Press the middle clock button on the front of the display for approximately 5 seconds. The display will turn blue and set 1 will be displayed. Also to the right hand side of the display the time will be flashing above the words timer on. 
Here, you can set the hour when you would like the heat pump to enter the setback mode. Then press the center button to advance the timer and set the minutes using the up and down buttons. Here, for example, we have selected 11.15 p.m. Press the center timer button again to advance the menu to select the temperature option. Then press the up and down buttons to set the desired temperature, which you wish the heat pump to set back to. In this example, 18 degrees from 11.15 onwards. Now press the timer button again to advance the menu so that you can select the hour and minutes for the timer offsetting using the up and down buttons. Then press the center button again to advance the menu to select the temperature option and press the plus or minus buttons to set the desired temperature which you wish the heat pump to raise back up to. In this example, 22 degrees from 6.15 onwards in the morning. Always remember to select a time one hour before you actually need the heat pump to reach its room temperature target, as it will need this one hour period to efficiently increase the temperature. To confirm your settings, simply leave the unit alone for approximately 20 seconds and the heat pump will automatically save your settings and return to normal operating mode. A second program set to a different setback time and temperature can also be set if required. The filter is required to be cleaned roughly every three months. If the middle indicator light is flashing, then this means that the filter is ready to be checked and cleaned. To clean the filter, firstly turn the heat pump off by turning the control knob to zero. Then release the front top panel by carefully pulling it towards you with the bottom edge. Then lift it off of the hooks at the top of the panel. You will now see the filter at the top of the unit. Pull the filter housing out fully. The white filter membrane can easily be cleaned by simply vacuuming the filter membrane with any conventional domestic vacuum cleaner. If you notice any holes in the filter or it is damaged in any way, you will need to contact your installer or housing association to get a replacement filter fitted. To replace the filter, ensure that it is located on the top runners and then slide the filter all the way back. To replace the panel, hook it back on the top and gently push the bottom back onto the spring clips until they click. Running down the left hand side of the heat pump, you will see a copper pipe with a black rubber device somewhere in the middle. You should not see water flowing through this rubber device, but in the event that you do, you will need to contact your maintenance engineer or housing association and notify them of this, as this could mean that you have too much pressure in your system. In the event that you need to speak with an engineer regarding your heat pump, you will need to quote your heat pump serial number. So it's a good idea to note this down before you call. The serial number is located behind the bottom service panel on a sticker that starts with the letters SN and is followed by the 14 digit serial number. If you require further operating instructions regarding your heat pump or room thermostat, please refer to the user manuals that have been left with your unit. Alternatively, you can visit www.nebi.co.uk where you can download copies of the user manuals.